Well, the Roosevelt era is the, the launching pad for civil rights history in the U.S. Until the Roosevelt era, there is no discussion about ending segregation, discrimination. At some point, the government had to start listening to black people and understanding what their needs were, not just their needs, but what their rights were. What the Roosevelt's did was lay the groundwork for what other presidents would take advantage of eventually. There was tremendous effort uh, across the board of citizens to really work to move this country to be uh, more inclusive and to really enact the vision of government being there to serve the needs of the people. He, as president, or, or Eleanor, uh, they collectively were able to promote specific policies that supported the African American community at a time when African Americans were really coming into the fold to be and vote as Democrats. So it, it gave that community an opportunity to have a bit of agency. What takes root in the 1930s and will carry forward is the NAACP's legal campaign targeting segregation and education and voting discrimination, led by Charles Houston. That begins in the early 30s, and it's really closely aligned with the political openings created by the New Deal. There's a lot of work that presidents do that is what we would call submerged government. All of those decisions that get made away from the public's view but have incredible impact on what the public experiences. And you have two major court cases during this era. One in 1938, which overturned segregation at the University of Missouri Law School, which is the key stepping stone to Brown. There's a straight line from that to the Brown decision in 1954. And then you have the white primary case in 1944. In 1944, a court appointed by President Roosevelt, eight of the eight to one decision, the eight appointees were Roosevelt appointees, uh, overturned the white primary. Smith v. Allwright was to voting what Brown was to schools. Voting in the South Carolina went from 3,500 African Americans to 50,000 by 1950. And the foundation for their voices to be heard and included is, is built in this period of time. It, it's, a, it's a bridge to the next generation of civil rights activists. And without that bridge, I, th I don't think that the next phase would have occurred because it opened up all kinds of opportunities. Thank you.